Okay, part two, hopefully um, between opening, closing the last video and opening this one, you have already graphed number five. So it says, use your calculator to graph the function f of x equals negative one-half times quantity of x minus one times quantity of x plus two squared times quantity of x minus five. Identify the turning points of the function and round to two decimal places. So when you graphed, you should have seen that you had three turning points. So you should have found that you had a minimum at negative 0.137, negative 10.1, and then you should have seen that you had a maximum at negative 2,0, and then another maximum at 3.64 and 57.1. Okay, I think that must be where my calculator rounded my answers for me, I don't really remember. And so it says round the two decimal places, but give whatever your calculator gave you. So TI-84s, TI-inspires, I'm not sure what there's going to be a difference. Um, but if you have answers somewhere around these, then that means you did the process correctly. If you're not sure how to find your local mins and local maxes, then just ask. Okay? So moving on to number six, I think you should pause now. Try to graph six A, B, C, and D and identify the domain and range. And when you're done, you can come back and check with the video. So go ahead and pause now and try it on your own. Okay, so hopefully you have already graphed it and you found your domain and range. So first of all, right here, there's some patterns you might recognize as you continue to graph. So notice here, if you were to multiply all of this out, you would get a cubic function. This is x times x squared, so altogether we have an x cubed, which means my function should look something like this. So if I have a function that is a cubic, it continues going down infinitely, it continues going up infinitely, and as it goes up infinitely, it goes to the right infinitely. As it goes down infinitely, it goes to the left infinitely. So in the x cubed function, your domain will be all real numbers, and your range will be all real numbers every single time. Okay, how about your next one, letter B? Well, in letter B, we have an x squared times an x times an x times an x. So if we were to multiply all of that out, we would have x to the fifth power. And an x to the fifth power is very similar, the parent graph is very similar to the x cubed parent graph, except you have one little extra bump in there, right? One little extra maximum and minimum. So here, this is what a x to the fifth power would look like, particularly if it's a positive in front of the x to the fifth. So here we have it. So again, it continues to go down infinitely. It continues to go up infinitely. So my range is all real numbers. And as it goes down infinitely, it continues to get wider infinitely. It continues to get wide, wider. So my range is also, once again, all real numbers. However, if you look at letter C, when you graph letter C, you should have seen this is x to the third power times x, which gives me x to the fourth power. x to the fourth power is very similar to an x squared, right? An x squared, that's a parabola. Well, x to the fourth may have an extra little hump in there, which looks like a w, okay? If you have a negative in front, it would look like an m. But it looks like a W, which means, well, what does that mean? Well, your domain continues to get wider and wider and wider and wider. So there's no restriction on your domain. It's still all real numbers. However, your range is going to change here, right? So you're going to have a minimum value. So therefore, your range in letter C is Y must be greater than or equal to negative 1.69. And finally, for letter D, if we multiply this out, we would have x times x squared times x squared again times x. So that would be an x to the sixth power. x to the sixth power is like x squared is like x to the fourth, except you have an extra little bump in there. right? Instead of a w, it's like an m within a w. So again, continues to get wider and wider and wider, so the domain is all real numbers. However, you should have a minimum. And this one, it looked something like this when you graphed it. So here was your minimum, and that minimum value was negative 21.29. So therefore, your range needs to be greater than negative 
0.29, right? Why greater than? Because this is a minimum value, it's everything above it. So looking at the next question, number seven, it says, can you summarize, or what can you summarize? I, should, says, I suppose it should say, can you summarize something about the domains and ranges of a given polynomial? So I can, I mean, look at the odd functions. These are called odd functions, x cubed, x to the fifth. What do we notice about the domain and range? Odd functions, domain and range is all real numbers. For even functions, what's going to be limited? Well, your range, your domain is all real numbers, but your range is limited, right? It's going to be greater than or equal to some number if there's a minimum value, or less than or equal to some number if there's a maximum value. So you can summarize on your paper however you want to um, in reference to that. Okay, so remember the good old days when we did the inequalities. So when we had a quadratic with an inequality, we did the number line thing. Okay, and the number line thing says we graph our zeros. Our zeros are at 0 and 3. And then everything to the right of 0 would be positive. Everything to the left would be negative. Everything to the right of 3 would be positive. Everything to the left of 3 would be negative. Now be careful here. 3 is a double root. So we have to actually indicate that twice because this is a cubic function. It's the same one as up here for 6a, right? And if that's a cubic function, that means we should have three factors down here. And if we want this cubic function to be positive, then that means I need to make sure I'm looking at an area on the graph, or area down here on my number line where it would be positive. But look how easy it is to do it graphically. Right? When you graphed this, you should have seen that it went through 0 and it went through 3. So the graph comes up, goes through 0, comes back down, bounces away at 3, and it looks like that. Well, this is saying, when will all of the y values be greater than 0? So the y values are greater than 0 from 0 onward, so from here and to the right. right? So when is the y value 0? It's when x is greater than Zero, because right here after zero it goes up, 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 positive, 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 positive. Now here's an interesting situation right here. Here, when x equals three, it equals zero. So we have to omit that value because there's not a greater than or equal to sign. There's just a greater than sign, which means it can never equal zero. So we have to omit three. Otherwise, this would be when that graph would always be greater than zero. I know it's confusing, I'll probably have to go over this again in class. So be patient, try to figure it out, look at the next example, see if it helps. Okay, let's do it graphically, because really that's what I want you to understand here. My zeros for this graph are going to be at zero, at two, at four, at five. So this is a what? This is an x to the fifth power, which means it increases bounces away because it's squared, goes through 2, goes through 4, goes through 5. Now I have no idea how high and how low these go because I don't have my calculator, I don't remember the sketch of the graph. But it does look like this. And notice in this scenario, this question, let me erase some of this over here. This question for letter B is asking us when will this function be less than 0? So that means all the values below the x-axis. So when will it be less than 0? Well, this is less than 0. The graph is less than 0 here, and the graph is less than 0 here. So now you have to think of that in terms of inequality. So in terms of x, x is 2 right here. So when x is less than 2, then it will be underneath the graph. Okay, but then we have to omit 0 because... It can't be equal to 0, it has to be less than 0. And when it's 0, it's actually equal to 0. But then negative 1, negative 2, it goes below the graph. And over here, between 4 and 5, so my other stipulation is when x, oops, not going to have enough room there, is when x is between 4 and 5. So these are the sections when that graph will be negative, or when that graph will be less than zero. OK, 
Okay, let's try the last one. The last one I'm trying to figure out when the graph will be positive, because it's greater than or equal to, when the graph will be above the x-axis. Okay, so let's check out the zeros. The zeros are at 3, 1, 2, 3, right? So right here and that 1. So then we know that it's an x to the fourth power because x cubed times x is x to the fourth, so it's going to be like a w. Now, with x to the third power, it actually flattens out at x to the third power. So it's going to come down, go through 1, and then it's going to kind of flatten out and go back up. And remember from up here, we know it has a minimum of negative 1.69. Okay, so then what do we do from there? Well, we're looking to see what satisfies this equation. It says we want this, the mouth open toward this function, so we want to know when this function is positive. Well, the function is positive right here, and this function is positive right here. And that's it. So from this 0 to the left, and from this 0 to the right, is where the function is positive, or where it's greater than or equal to 0. So this is a 0 of 1, so it's going to be positive when it's greater than or equal to 1. Or sorry, not greater than or equal to, it's going to the left. So when it's less than or equal to 1, or the function is going to be positive when it's greater than or equal to 3. So there is my final solution. Um, again, do your homework, read hot math, see if it will help you. I know it's going to be a little bit confusing. And during the review day, we can talk more about it, um, and I can answer your questions then. All right, see you soon. Bye.